the Mass Effect trilogy has been described as the most important science fiction universe of our generation, and I tend to agree. Born out of the minds of BioWare, the same folks that made Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic the space exploratory gem that is Mass Effect was conceived. With the recent announcement of Mass Effect Andromeda, this is a perfect opportunity for us to relive some of those great moments with Commander Shepard and all of his squad mates. With that being said, here's 7 things that you probably didn't know about the Mass Effect trilogy. I think it goes without saying that some of the facts in this video may contain spoilers. You have been warned. Space exploration has been described as the final frontier, and nothing's more satisfying than probing Uranus. <laughs> Let me explain. In Mass Effect 2, you have to probe a crapload of different planets in search of resources. It was a tedious and uneventful process that was left out of Mass Effect 3 due to fan outcry. But there is one planet that you could probe in the solar system. Uranus. Edie has to tell you what planet you're probing at the time, and she's slightly embarrassed to utter the words, Big games like Mass Effect can afford to hire some big-time celebrity voice actors to bring out the personality of these beloved characters. Martin Sheen voices the Cerberus leader known as the Elusive Man. The Elusive Man was based off of the shadowy figure, the Smoking Man, from the 90s hit sci-fi series, The X-Files. Both characters are seen smoking cigarettes, but Martin Sheen doesn't actually smoke, so while recording lines of dialogue for the game, he would simulate smoking by sucking on a pen. The unmistakable voice of Keith David can be heard every time you encounter Admiral Anderson. I'm too old to go racing across the galaxy. Carrie Ann Moss, known for her famous role as Trinity in The Matrix, plays the Citadel's resident badass, Arya. Killing that man was deeply satisfying. The roided out super soldier James Vega was played by 90s heartthrob Freddie Prince Jr. While Seth Green plays Joker, the comical pilot of the Normandy, he ad-libbed most of his lines, and 75% of it ended up being used in the final version of the game. It's joking time. Mark Meir and Jennifer Hale provide the voices of Commander Shepard in their respective genders. They are also the voices of the Kit Catalyst at the end of Mass Effect 3. That's right, this shiny blue child has three voices, all mixed into one. If you listen closely to the next clip with headphones, remove one ear at a time and you can hear Jennifer in your left ear and Mark in your right ear. By ones who recognized that conflict would always arise between synthetics and organics. <laughs> I'm sure there's some sort of allegorical theory behind them doing that, but let's just move on. In Mass Effect 3, the character known as the Stargazer is voiced by an actual astronaut, Buzz Aldrin, the second man to step foot on the moon. Speaking of Buzz Aldrin, there are lots of references to people and events involved in space exploration throughout the game. The Armstrong Cluster is named after Neil Armstrong, the first person to step foot on the moon. Gagarin Station is named after Russian pilot Yuri Gagarin, the first human to journey into outer space. The Kepler Verge is named after German astronomer Johann Kepler, best known for his laws of planetary motion. Lowell City on Mars is named after Percival Lowell, an astronomer directly responsible for the discovery of Pluto. When landing on Earth's moon, you can find the wreckage CCCP Luna 23, a Russian probe sent to the moon for the purpose of retrieving rock samples. On the Citadel, near a shipping warehouse in the Zakara Ward, the player can interact with a hilarious vending machine that dispenses a popular soft drink, Tupari. The machine will play a number of slogans promoting the drink, one of which is, Tupari brings your ancestors back from the grave. This is a reference to an advertising urban legend regarding the real-life soft drink, Pepsi. Its Pepsi Generation slogan was, Come alive, you're in the Pepsi Generation. When translated and advertised in China, it was supposedly misinterpreted in Chinese as Pepsi brings your ancestors back from the grave. Everybody wanted to get just a glimpse of what Tally looked like under that godforsaken mask. Fans everywhere rejoiced when they found out that if they romanced Tally, a photo of her will appear on the nightstand next to Commander Shepard's bed. Unfortunately, instead of auditioning models for a unique image, the Tally photograph is actually just an imported stock photo of a model with a few minor tweaks to make her appear less human. Fans of the series hated the revelation. They consider the identity of Tally very important, and some felt that Bioware shrugged off the event with bad Photoshop and loads of lens flare. 
By the way, the woman in the stock photo, Hamasa Koistoni, was the first Muslim beauty contestant to be crowned Miss England in 2005. The Mass Effect series has lots of connections to BioWare's other franchise, Dragon Age. Commander Shepard has a cornucopia of sweet armor to choose from in the game. In Mass Effect 2 and 3, you have access to Blood Dragon armor. This armor set looks remarkably like a suit of armor worn by the Knights of Old, ready to face off against fierce, fire-breathing creatures. When exploring Donovan Hawk's vault, there is a statue of an ogre from the Dragon Age series. Wow. Imagine that thing coming at you in a dark alley. And if you play Dragon Age Origins and go into the trophy room, you'll see a Krogan's head hanging on the wall. It is described as an unknown beast. In the beginning, the game wasn't even going to be called Mass Effect. The original code name for the project was SFX, short for Science Fiction X. As dumb as that name sounds, the Bioware employees grew attached to it, and they didn't want to change it. But due to the fact that SFX was already a name of a long-standing magazine, they decided the change was necessary. Some of you may be wondering why they chose the name Mass Effect. BioWare chose that title out of 10 possible names because it related to the dark energy used to drive a lot of the technology, and it was the one that they hated the least. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then please leave a thumbs up. And next time you see your buddies, you can blow their minds with some of these amazing facts.